All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to do computation layer with Desmos and, and do some self-checking, but we're going to prevent the workaround that students have discovered that if we're, uh, they can just copy and paste the problem into the answer box and get it marked as correct. We're going to show how to prevent that from happening. All right, so what I've got here is I'm on the Desmos website and I'm at teacher.desmos.com. Now I have a, a pre-made thing right here, uh, an activity. I'm going to get into preview mode right now. And, and there, all I have is just a simple 23 plus 14. And of course, we know the answer is 37. We mark mark it, uh, submit, and then, oh yeah, look at that, it's correct. Okay, so we've got a couple of issues. One. If I type in 23 plus 14, watch what happens. First, if it gives me the answer over here, but then secondly, if I hit submit, I get it right. And all the kid did was type in 23 plus 14. In fact, now that we know that the answer is 37, I could type in um, 40 minus three. It evaluates to 37. I hit submit and it still marks it as correct. So that's no good. So we want to, we want to fix that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and we're going to edit our activity. All right, so now I've got three components. I've got a sketch layer where the students are going to do their work. <clears throat> I've got the problem where the problem shows up, the question shows up. We're going to talk about that computation layer in detail in a second. And down here is the student input box where the students are going to put in the answer. Now let's go into the code, this the computation layer. And I've got these three main parts right here and it's all displaying it in the content <clears throat> sync. So first <clears throat> I've got the question and this is where the variable question is equal to simplify. And in this case, I've got 23 plus 14, but I can make it any problem I want. I've got the answer. And in this case, it's the numeric value of 37. And of course, I have to remember all these parentheses and quotation marks. That's all important stuff. And then the last one is the feedback. So it's here's the feedback when and all of this Right there, that highlighted part is when it's correct, I want you to give me a green checkbox. When it's not correct, and this is the thing for not correct, I'm gonna give you, I want a red X. Otherwise, say nothing at all. So there's the feedback. When it's correct, say a checkbox. When it's wrong, say an X. Otherwise, say nothing at all. And then down here, we're going to, uh, have the content. The question is going to be displayed and then the feedback is going to happen. Um, and if the feedback is not ready to happen, remember, it's just going to say nothing. Okay. So that's the, that's the general flow. Uh, talking about why it's correct. What does that look like? Well, it means the student has inputted the dot, the, the answer and the student's answer, the numeric value of the student's answer is equal to the answer, which in this case is 37, the numeric value of 37. And then if it's wrong, means that means it's been submitted, but it doesn't have the and it's, it matches the answer. So we're going to put and uh, we're going to leave that off. So it's just oh, the student submitted it and that's the best we could do, in which case it's marked. Okay. Now, the problem with that is when we type in uh, 37, everything looks great. But if we type in 23 plus 14, two things happen. First, it, it, it evaluates it, which is a bummer. And then secondly, if I hit submit, it still marks it as correct. So we got a couple of things going on. Uh, first off, I don't want Desmos to be so gall darn helpful. So I'm going to get back into this problem computation layer right here. And oops, no, that's not where I want to go. I want to go down into the answer box. This is where um, the student is typing in the answer. So I'm going to turn off 
the evaluation. So I'm gonna hit disable evaluation and I'm gonna put true. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna press done. I'm gonna click preview. And now here, when I type in 37, it still marks it as correct. Yay, that's what I wanted. But here's the thing. If the student types in 23 plus 14, notice it's not, it's not evaluating. It's not telling me that the answer is 37. But the problem is when I hit submit, it still marks it as correct. So let's fix that part. So we fixed half the problem. Half the problem is it's no longer uh, telling us the answer over here, but it is still marking it as correct. Okay. So now here's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to make a copy of this slide. So this slide is fine. Let's just make a, a copy of it. So I'm gonna do Command C because I'm a Mac or Control C if I was a Windows. And then I would do Command V or Control V for paste. So now I have two copies of the slide in the upper left hand corner. Uh, but I am, my practice of doing things is when I'm on slide two, I'm gonna name all my components with a two as a trailing <laughs> number here to indicate that these things are all happening on slide two. Now, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. First thing I need to do is I need to change all of these ones to twos. And I learned a really cool shortcut for how to do that quickly. I'll, I'll show it to you later. Um, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna change the answer. The answer is no longer gonna be a numeric value. We're just going to use the quotation. So 34, uh, 37. So in this case, it's no longer a number. It's now um, like text. So we're gonna call it LaTeX, L-A-T-E-X, LaTeX. Okay. So the feedback, when the student provides the, you know, click submit, and here it is right here. We're gonna change this numeric value because this is no longer a number. It is now LaTeX. I know it looks like latex, but it's latex. Right now, everything else is gonna work. So um, now when I hit done and hit preview, watch what happens here. So now when I type in 23 plus 14, first off, it's not evaluating, yay. It's not evaluating because we still have the student input down here. We have the disable evaluation is true. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to preview. So it's not 23 plus 14, but now watch what happens when I hit submit. Whoop, bam, it's not marking it correct. It means the student actually has to type in 37. And that's because, I'm gonna go back into the computation layer. This 37 is like, it's it. There, It's not a number, meaning it can't evaluate to that answer. It's gotta be 37 precisely. All right, for example, if I were to type in, let's go back to preview, has its pros and cons. So we know that 37 is correct. Okay? But if I were to type in 37.0, technically that would be correct. But because it's a LaTeX, it's, a, it's, it's looking at the text, it's, it's saying, nope, that's not right. It's gotta be 37 only, that's it. And that's how we're gonna get it to work. So, it's got its pros and its cons, um, but that's how you get it. Now, what we could do, I'm gonna copy that slide, and I'm gonna do paste, and I'll, now I have three, and I, so I'm gonna change this to three, three, and uh, let's do three right there. And remember, my student value, in student input is still, it's dis disabling the evaluation, that's what I want. Now let's go into problem three. Now remember, I have to change all these twos to threes because we're now on the third slide. Now check out this cool, <laughs> cool trick. I think on my on my Mac, I hold down the command key. On your Windows, I think you're gonna hold down the control key. So I'm gonna start with putting it behind the first two. I'm gonna hold down the command key and then I'm gonna click behind the, the second two and the third two. And notice I now have cursors blinking at all three twos. 
And when I hit the delete key, all three of them delete. And I could type in the number three and all three are replaced with number three. Isn't that cool? Um, so it allows you to quickly edit. Now, uh, let's say uh, I want, let's do fractions. Let's do fractions. So uh, the way we enter in fractions. Now, if I typed in one slash two plus, uh, let's do three slash four. So uh, one half plus three fourths, all right? Now, and of course, we now know the answer. Uh, the answer is one and a quarter. So there's a couple of ways to do it, but let me just kind of, um, for the placeholder right here, we'll just leave it there. We're not gonna get to the answer part. Uh, but when I hit preview, look at this, Ugh, that's ugly. They don't look like the fractions I want. I want fractions, I don't want that slash thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into problem three to indicate that I want it to look all fancy, all right? It's LaTeX, it's more LaTeX. So I'm gonna hit the tick mark. The tick mark, whoa bam, is the one, it's the key directly to the left of the number one. Okay? Um, it's coincidence that it's the number one here. On my keyboard, it's the tick mark, which is next to the number one or above the tab key, right? And then I'm gonna put a, tick mark down here at the end to indicate the end of the LaTeX. Now I'm gonna hit done and click preview and now it kind of looks different. It's a different font, isn't it? That's because it's LaTeX. It's rendering it as LaTeX, not just boring text, all right? But I want it to be even better. I want these fractions to look official, but I don't know the official LaTeX code. There's some code, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna add a new tab, and I'm gonna go to just the normal Desmos calculator. Just the normal Desmos calculator, and I'm gonna type in one half plus three fourths. Eh, it didn't work the way I wanted it to, so I'm gonna do one half plus three fourths. So I'm using the uh, slash key under the question mark to make my fractions. So that's, the, that's how I want it to render. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to my activity and I'm gonna delete this stuff and I'm gonna paste in. Ooh, there's the code. That's the LaTeX code for give me a fraction called one half plus another fraction called three fourths. Now, this is obviously not the right LaTeX for the answer of one and a quarter. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go up here and I can add a new line if I want. And I could do one, and I better use my little keyboard here. And I'm gonna do uh, one and a half. Oops, it's supposed to be one and a quarter. Uh, delete one and a quarter. All right. Now, there's a gap in here, so I need to hit the delete key right here. Well then, delete, there it is. So there's my my answer, one and a quarter. So I'm gonna click copy, go back over here, and I'm gonna delete this junk. And I'm gonna put in the answer right there. There's the LaTeX. Now notice up here, I needed to indicate with a tick mark that here comes LaTeX. But down here in the answer, I do not need to worry about that. Everything else is gonna look good, is gonna work. When I hit done and click preview, oh, look at that. There's my, my work. Uh, the question, it renders perfectly. Now, of course, my answer. I wanna type in one and a quarter. So I'm gonna type in one and a, oopsies, down here, quarter. Now, when I hit submit, a couple of things. First off, uh, well, anyway, when I hit submit, wah, bam, it's correct. Now, let's say a student accidentally put in a gap right there. Now when I click submit, it won't work because of that gap. But here's the neat thing. I can copy that. I can close this and I can go back into my problem code. Now I can change this a little bit. I can say, well, I'm gonna make two acceptable answers. Answer two is well, bam, I copied and pasted, and there's the little gap, right? So now I have answer, and I have answer two. In fact, let's change this to answer one. 
gonna give me an error because I no longer have an answer. I have answer one or answer two, but I don't have an answer. So now it's saying, what's correct? Well, when it's submitted and it's either equal to answer one or the student input three dot latex is equal to answer two. All right, now I need to put all of this in parentheses. So it's saying, how is it gonna be marked as correct? Well, it's gotta be submitted and one of these two conditions has to be true. And that's when it's gonna be marked as correct. Otherwise it's submitted and it's wrong, okay? And when I hit preview, there's my problem, rendering correctly. I'm gonna do one space, one divided by four. Watch, whoa, bam! That's correct, but if I take away that space, whoa, bam, it's gonna be right. Now, if I were to put in too many spaces, more than just that one, it's gonna be marked wrong. Ah, yeah, because I have, that's, that's it, the LaTeX. I technically would have to provide every possible answer. And there isn't all that many. For example, answer three, uh, maybe the student left it as five fourths. So frac, oops, quotation, frac, quotation, and let's leave it as five fourths. I'm not gonna do 1.25 because I don't want to encourage students to just type this into a calculator and get the answer. So there's my five fourths, which means I need to add four student input three dot latex latex is equal to answer three. So now I have three possible answers right there. When I hit done, click preview, there it is. So now if I type in five fourths, it's correct. So all of a sudden, I now have a variety, oopsies, a variety, oh my goodness, go away, <laughs> there, one, one, there, of answers that a student can type in and it will work. Right? So the big key, going back to slide one, we're gonna change the numeric value to just a LaTeX. In fact, let's go to the simpler one right here, slide two. Just a simple LaTeX. We're gonna get rid of the numeric value with the answer in quotations and we're gonna change that to LaTeX. And that is how we really encourage students to actually do the work rather than just copying and pasting the question into the answer box to get credit for it. And then if you really want to get fancy, you can provide a variety of answers and then use the parentheses and the or statement uh, to really create some awesome customization. And that's how we use Desmo CL and LaTeX to kind of get around some workarounds that some of our students are discovering.